All right, Kipsters, if you made it here, you're up to the last classwork. This is classwork number three. Please make sure you put your heading up here and the name of your college over here. It should say Spring Break Classwork Number 3, Area of Trapezoids. And, not surprisingly, the aim is to accurately calculate the area of trapezoids. Okay, so what I'd love for you to do now is take a look at Fact 1 and fill in the blank. I'm pretty sure you should know it by now. This is the third time we've done it. It says area is the amount of, bl of square blank it takes to cover a flat or plain figure. It's always measured in square units or units squared. Go ahead and fill it in now. And then call out what you got. Units is the right answer. Area is the amount of square units it takes to cover a flat plane or figure. Fact number two. This was going back to our very first classwork. It says the area of any parallelogram, including a rhombus, rectangle, or blank, can be calculated with the same formula. Area equals base times height. Or area equals length times width. A reminder, the height or width is the vertical distance straight up and down from the chosen base to its opposite side. Uh, what word should go in that blank? Go ahead. Yeah, it should be square. My apologies. There should be uh, a parenthesis there to close that up. But any parallelogram, and parallelograms include rhombuses or rhombi, rectangles, or squares. Okay? And all those, base times height. And then one last thing about the height, just another reminder, it's got to be straight up and down. It's going to be a big deal today for the trapezoid as well. Fact number three, that was our last classwork, the one you guys just completed. It says to find the area of a triangle, you blank the base and the height and then divide by two. This can be shown in any of the following two formulas. Area equals base times height divided by two or area equals one half times the base times the height. What word do you think should go in that blank? Go ahead and call it out. If you said multiply, you are correct. Okay? Uh, so that's just a quick review. And now on to something new. I take it back because for part A and part B, this is actually something you should know how to do already. So what I would love for you to do, you see the guide of practice says for A, and B, find the area of each triangle. So please do the right thing now. I'd love for you to pause it and find the area of both of these triangles, remembering that with four numbers here, there are only two that matter, the base and the height. So use the formula for the area of the triangle that you know and calculate the area for both A and B. Then click play again and we'll check it over. But I'd love for you to press pause now. So go ahead and press pause now and calculate those triangles. Okay, if you're back, we're going to go step by step. Hopefully the first thing you wrote down was area equals one half times base times height. Next step, area equals one half. Now here's the first place for the blunder, right? Where is the base? Could you please point to it on your screen? Are you pointing there? If you are, you are correct. The base is seven yards. Do not forget to write the units, please. Now for the height. Go ahead and point to the height of trying of the triangle in question A. I hope you aren't pointing to one of those two because the height is four yards. That is the only side that is going vertically straight up and down from the top of the shape to the bottom. So now we have to calculate 1 half times 7 times 4. First step, let's do 1 half times 7. Best way to do that is a kip infinity. We call it the invisible 1. Uh, but just basically putting that whole number 7 over 1. And then multiplying across. And making sure that we multiply our answer by 4. I removed the units. You know I'm bringing them back in the answer choice. Uh, but just to do the computation, I'm removing the units for now. 1 half times 7 over 1. Uh, 1 times 7 makes what? 2 times 1 makes what? 7 over 2. Last step, multiply it by 4. And we're almost done. Uh, you know I'm going to put it as 4 over 1. So we can do, once again, a kip infinity. We call it the shoot, shoot. Uh, 7 times 4 is 28. 2 times 1 is 2. 
28 over 2. That's just a simple division problem, and you should have gotten the whole number of 14. In our answer line, we're putting 14 square yards because we multiplied yards times yards. Okay, so the area for shape A, you should have gotten 14 square yards. I'll give you all 30 seconds, maybe a little less, to, to make sure you have all that stuff written down the correct way. Okay, make sure you have it all down. And now we're moving on to letter B. Shape looks a little bit different. It's still a triangle, and we're still using the same area formula. Area equals one-half base time type. Bring it down to one-half. Go ahead and point on the screen to where the base is. Go ahead and point to it now. Hope you were pointing there. That's 12 yards. Tricky part is this next one. Go ahead and point to where the height is. Make sure your finger doesn't end up over one of these X's. If you were pointing to the 4, you were correct. So we are multiplying 1 half times 12 times 4. Okay, uh, first step, 1 half times 12. Uh, some of you can actually do this in your head, thinking of what is half of 12. I'm just going to show it to you the way I've been showing before. 1 half times 12 over 1, and then times 4. I'm removing the units. For now, but you know I'm going to bring them back at the end. Uh, 1 half times 12 over 1, that's a shoot, shoot. 1 times 12 is what, y'all? 2 times 1 is what, y'all? So 12 over 2 times 4 over 1, just like before. That's going to give us 28, oh sorry, 48 over 2. There you go, and 48 divided by 2. Many of y'all could probably do that in your head. Did you get the answer of 24 square yards? So the area of this triangle is 24 square yards. The area of this triangle is 14 square yards. Hopefully that should have been reviewed for you, uh, but there was a major point to doing it, and it has to do with the next problem. Okay, here we go. As, as a quick reminder, and I'm doing this on purpose, I promise, the answer we got to letter A means this area is 14 square yards, and the area we got for B means that the area is 24 square yards. Now take a look at letter C. I think it might be on the separate page for you, but I'm leaving A and B up there for a very important reason. Okay, first, I really want you to look at this trapezoid here and notice something about the units, and notice something about the units in A and B. So take 10 seconds to look at it and see what you notice. Why don't you go ahead and tell the screen, I know it's not going to talk back to you, but tell the screen what do you notice about the numbers and the units in trapezoid C and how it compares to, tra uh, to the triangles in A and B. Go ahead and tell the screen. All right, I know that was a little weird, but I hope you noticed that this had seven yards up here, and that had seven yards. And then I see four yards. Is this four yards, that same dotted line? The height seems to be the same. Then I had a five yards here and a five yards there. Then over here, I had this whole base being 12 and this whole base being 12. So it looks kind of like these two triangles might be coming together to make this. And watch, I'm going to prove to you that that does happen. First... Look at the trapezoid. Whoop, whoop. Right there. We want to find the area of the trapezoid shown to the left. Take a look at that red line. And now take a look at the two shapes that have been made when I chop and create one diagonal across the trapezoid. And you can do this for any trapezoid, and you will make two triangles if you make a diagonal. Now look. That blue piece is this little area right here. And that orange piece is this little area here. And together, the blue and the orange actually make letter C. So what do you think the area of the trapezoid to the left is? Go ahead, call it out if you think you know. Yeah, if you add both of these Areas together, 14 and 24, the area of this trapezoid is 38 square yards. And that's pretty cool.
that you can use the area of a triangle to calculate the area of a trapezoid. Now, there is a formula for the area of a trapezoid, and it comes from the idea that you are adding the area of two triangles. So watch. What we did was we added the area of this one triangle. I made it colored blue because you know the area of a triangle is half base times height, but the base, I wanted to remind you, is blue. Uh, and then you add it to the area of the other triangle, and that base for this triangle was 12, and that was different. But both of them had the same height of 4. So here's what it, another way to show it looks like this. I know this is weird, but it's kind of like factoring out, which I know uh, you've done before. Uh, and it looks like this. Both of these have a 1 half in them, both of these terms. And they both have a height in them. And if you pull out the B plus B, it can look like that. And then at the end, you multiply it by the height. I know that's a little weird, but just imagine pulling out the half and pulling out the height. And what that means is you take half of the sum of the bases and multiply it by the height. Now, most textbooks aren't made in color, so what they do instead is they make it look like this. They call it B1 plus B2. So if you take a look at this trapezoid over here, okay? B1 is one of the bases, and it really doesn't matter which one you call B1, but I like to call B1 the one on the top, because you know trapezoids don't have the same base. Like a rectangle has the same base and height. I mean, the same two bases. A trapezoid doesn't have the same two bases. One is longer than the other. So this would be base one. This would be base two. And then the height is still the one that goes straight up and down. Okay. So to find the area of a trapezoid, you find the sum of the bases, and then you take half of it and multiply it by the height. So watch what this looks like. One half, and then base one was the seven yards, and base two, go ahead and call out what you think base two is. That's the 12 yards. And then you multiply all of that times the height. Now, we use the seven, we use the 12, we have the 5, the 4, and the 5. Which one is the height? Call it out, please. Yeah, it's that same thing as before. We're not touching diagonals, y'all. We're not touching them. We're, we go with the vertical, straight up and down height of 4. Okay? So you do 1 half, 7 plus 12, times 4. But remember, order of operations tells you you do what's ever in parentheses first. So you take 1 half, and then you do the 7 plus 12 first to get 19. Then you multiply by 4. And I'm not going to do the rest of the math with you because I know we've done this problem uh, a lot before. You make this 19 over 1, and then you shoot, shoot across, and then you multiply by 4. But I promise you, if you do all of that math, you're going to get 76 over 2, which is going to become 38 square yards. Okay, so I'm going to give you all 30 seconds or so to write that down. But again, the most important part, you take the sum of the bases because a trapezoid has two bases. One of them is going to be longer than the other. And all of this, this entire formula comes from the fact that you can cut a trapezoid with a diagonal and then find the area of both triangles. Okay? Let's go to that next page uh, where we have our final fact. Uh, it says, to find the area of a trapezoid, draw a blank line and just find the blank of the area of the two blank. All right, I'll give you like 15 seconds to fill in as many of those blanks as you can. I think, I think you can get two out of three, maybe all of them. Go ahead and try it. All right, let's see. Did you get the first blank? That would be a diagonal line. And then find the sum of the area of the two triangles that you made. Okay? And that formula looks like this. One half, parentheses, base one plus base two, times the height. Okay, most important thing though, first step, 
take the sum of the bases. Okay? And then you can see on the bottom, it's the final time we're doing this. I know you're sad. Uh, I'm just kidding. I know you're not. I know you want it to be over with. And it will be now. The chant part three. We're adding two more lines, and we're done with our geometry chant. Okay? You probably remember the first few lines. Perimeter is the outside. Add up all the sides. It's measured in units like inches, feet, and miles. Area is the inside base times height, but only for parallelograms, no matter what the type. And if we have a triangle, we know just what to do. We take the base and times the height and then divide by two. So that was old. And now our final thing. The last two lines of our geometry chant are a little bit tricky. It goes like this. The area of a trapezoid, the trickiest of all, take the sum of the bases times the height, cut it in half, that's all. And that's it. Okay? The area of a trapezoid, the trickiest of all, take the sum of the bases times the height, cut it in half, that's all. And you might have noticed there's a fourth video that does have the whole geometry chant if you do want to practice it. But for now, what you need to do is go check out your last independent practice, which is on it, finding the area of the trapezoid. Don't take any shortcuts. Show your units. Show all of your math. And thank you again for listening. Have a great rest of your break.